morning, everybody. This is Mihai from BizCenters.com. Our webinar is um, London Session Scenarios. We're looking at pound dollar and pound yen. I'll be um, doing a top-down analysis on um, uh, these two pairs and then uh, look at um, a different approach, uh, my uh, rainbow chart, and see which of these... Um, strategies give anything for today, either for um, for swing trading or for intraday trading. All right. Uh, any questions before we begin? I'll be starting with uh, pound dollar. As always, we're doing, uh, first of all, the review of what's going on on the bigger charts. We um, plot our main um, lines, the support resistance and trend lines. Then we'll see uh, what we have, if we have something interesting on the waves. And then um, shorter term, we'll see if um, there's anything uh, to trade right now or maybe for later today, some level that we can um, take advantage of. So let's see. We're looking at uh, the weekly chart first. All right. I'm just uh, going to plot the main uh, support resistance line. Major resistance, uh, 67. Um, 50. Just very quickly, um, this belongs more to a longer term analysis. We're not really that interested in um, in long term right now. We're uh, looking more for uh, uh, swing trading and intraday trading, something that we can um, open and close within uh, maximum uh, two, three days. All right. I think uh, these are the levels. I want also to check if the current levels are anywhere near the 78 fib retracement of the last wave down, and it seems to be the case. Um, I think the 78 fib comes in at um, 65.20. That's just a few uh, 20 pips above the um, round number, the 165. Okay, it seems like we got rejected there um, earlier this week. Now, I'm going to mark this as a possible important level. We'll see it on the daily chart. Uh, probably I'll mark it with red. But this is a FIB level, not um, a support resistance, um, classic support resistance level, with uh, potential to, to give rejections for um, the rest of the week. Now, this was the trend line I was using on the weekly chart. And there's also the possibility of having um, the trend line um, work as a resistance trend line now. As you can see, let me just plot it a bit lower. I've plotted on these lows here. You can see that first of, it got rejected first at the first attempt and then it might be rejected now on a second attempt. So we want to be careful about this 165.20 level. The high was 65.87. That's exactly um, what I was saying before regarding the round numbers, that these, um, um, let's say that the numbers which are rounder than, than the usual um, double digit, double zero um, levels, like let's say 170 or 165 or 160, they tend to be, let's say, broken with about uh, 50 to 100 pips before those levels actually turn into support resistance. So the fact that we went up 87 pips above the 165 round number is um, a good argument as well. If the round number is something like 159, I'm expecting from 25 to 50 pips breach of that level before that level becomes support or, uh, or resistance, if it becomes support resistance. If uh, it doesn't, then I'm going to count on it being already broken. All right. I think this is it for now for the weekly. All right. Let's see the daily chart. All right. Well, it looks like indeed uh, we have resistance here. I think the resistance on the daily is slightly higher. And actually, there's quite an interesting uh, setup on the waves here. Now, um, every time I look at uh, wave formation, I look at uh, the bigger picture to see 
whether there's uh, okay. Now, when I'm looking at the waves, I'm looking at two things: uh, break of uh, a dynamic line and break of a static horizontal line. Now, in our case here, let's just see what we're looking at. Now, this is the trend line for this bearish wave. Okay, this seems to me like a classic one, two, three, four, five. Okay. Even wave four went up to retest the bottom, the previous support. Um, it becomes resistance, and it gives another um, spike, and actually a, a lower low, but without the level of support being uh, really broken. So it sets this. You look at this level. Actually, the best close was at the limit at the 159 level. So even though price went down to 157.80. The 159 was not reached, but I can see clearly what is the trend line of the wave. Okay, so you see the one, two, three, four, five waves on this formation. Now, when price starts moving up, okay, you see it breaking the trend line. That's already a sign for you that the bearish formation is either over or it's going to be in standby until the correction ends. Now, this happens immediately at the break of the trend line. That's where you get the heads up. Okay, well, in our case here, we don't really have a horizontal line. That if you wait for the horizontal line to be broken, that's 155.20, and that's going to be more than just a retracement. So, let's just mark this level where it seems like we have now support 161. This would be a daily level. Marking it with red. We have the same... Um, weekly level. I'm just simply going to adjust it because I'm interested more in the daily level and set it up here around 65.50. Okay? And you can see how it gives the ABC corrective pattern stopping at the 78 pin. So let me just go back on this to tell you why I think that this level here might be a good point to short aggressively. Now, you look at the weekly chart, and you see break of trend line. Look at this big wave here. It's always supported on this red uh, trend line. Break of trend line, number one. Retest of the trend line, number two. Number three, stop, it stopped right at the 78 fib, and at the previous level of resistance. And number four, it has the shape and dynamic of a, an ABC um, corrective wave, while the wave right before it has the dynamic of a 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Let me quickly show these waves on the chart. I think I'll just remove them after that, but just to make uh, sure that they are clear. Wave 1, wave 2. Wave 3, wave 4, notice the support uh, turning into resistance, wave 5, wave A, quite a big retracement, wave B, usually I expect wave C to be about the same size as wave A, but that would push this retracement wave beyond the beginning of the impulsive wave, so that wouldn't make any uh, much sense. Um, I'm actually thinking that since we got rejected, this is not the first um, attempt at the, I mean, we are not at the 6550 level right now, are we? If this happened yesterday exactly at the top, I wouldn't have advised shorting exactly at the, that level, even though uh, from a risk-reward perspective, it's the best level because you are looking at a formation that potentially should give a one, two, three, four, five of about this dynamic. Now this is why I'm plotting these waves uh, to give a probability for the next move. Okay, and the next move seems to me uh, probable, something like this: another one, two, three, four, five. Now, this is just a projection, guys. It's not uh, meant to be a um, prediction. 
but based on the dynamic of the first wave and the dynamic of the second wave, which we already have printed on the chart, this is what I'm expecting to see next. Now, what are the options? What are the scenarios to follow in such a case? Number one would be taking the 78% short, aggressive short, right at the level where you see the resistance. That means that would be as close as possible to 6540. In our case, we're talking now about midterm scenarios. Um, the level where this setup would fail would be, in my opinion, something like 6660. So you have to be prepared for a stop of about this size. Now, again, if you cannot afford it, uh, if 200 bits or uh, slightly less, actually, is too much risk, then either you do not take the trade at all or you take the trade with a smaller position that would uh, give you, um, in terms of normal um, money uh, risk, about the same risk as what you usually trade. That's what I do. If I see something like this, if I see a trade that has good potential with a 180 pip stop, I take it if I like it, but maybe I reduce the, the size to half of my usual position. That means I'm not risking 180, I'm risking 90. Of course, I'm taking half the profit too. So um, it goes uh, both ways, uh, obviously. Now, this would be one possibility because we are very close to this resistance. And, well, while there might be another test of this area, price should not reach anywhere above 6650. I'm just choosing this level because it's slightly to the upside of the mid uh, area between the resistance and the top. So you want to be somewhere beyond the 50% uh, between uh, 6545 and 6737. There's no need to wait all the way up here to to accept that the trade is not working out. I would look for any breach of this 6550 resistance. Okay, but sometimes when you're trading daily charts or four hour charts, you need um, more than just 20 30 pips to make sure that you're not uh, hit by uh, by a spike around those levels. You're not sure anyway, but uh, at least you reduce the, the probability of that happening. So the first scenario would be, let me just um, mark it here. It's a swing. It's a short. Actually, the area I would like is um, 648065. We can refine this um, a bit more. If I look at the four hour chart, we'll see in a moment. Uh, stop loss based on the daily chart would be 67.60. That's about 160 pips, um, 150 at best. Uh, take profit can be uh, really low, somewhere in the 156, 155 area. So it's actually um, a longer term 156. Actually, 154, I would say 100 pips below the round number 15500. This would be the first idea, but we'll, I'll come back to it before the end of the session to maybe adjust these levels a little bit according to what the 4-hour chart uh, are suggesting. And let's see the 4-hour chart. You can actually even adjust the stop quite a lot if uh, you um, have uh, good reasons to believe that this is actually a top, then price will not reach here again. In that case, you have a stop much lower than that, a 166.10, 166.20 level. Uh, it makes quite a, a difference. Let's see. Let's see what we usually look at. Uh, do we have divergence at the, word, the top of this move? Um, there were, yes, there was divergence on the rate of change indicator and some, um, that's it, actually nothing else. I see the tricks and the MACD actually crossing lower, so that tells you that the 4-hour is now tilting to the downside, 
So that's a good uh, sign as well. This is what I don't like. It's the level where we are right now. It's a previous support, uh, previous resistance, as you can see, 64.55. Previous resistance several times that might now turn into support. So you would like probably to see this level broken. On a four hour chart, seeing this level broken might take uh, quite a long time. And if, when it's actually broken, you, you can see price around 63, 70, so that might be too late to join the party. But actually, there is some support here, so you cannot just ignore it. Let me see, um, according to what I said before, so we have enough reasons to believe that price will not revisit this 6550 area. Not really. I, I can't really rely on this because since we are at um, a previous resistance now support, uh, I wouldn't short right here because, well, it's just too risky. It's just uh, too... Uh, this uh, possible support is just too strong an argument to go again. Let me just check if the trend line has been broken. Not really. I just want to put the trend line as low as possible. Uh, no, the trend line is not really broken. So you don't have enough arguments for shorts yet. That's why I said this is a really aggressive um, trade. And it's good to, to consider taking it with a very small lot if you are taking it because it's just uh, going to um, have a very large um, risk margin. All right, what's going on on the one hour chart? Mm, I don't like the way MACD is um, starting to look um, like pushing up again. There's also uh, resistance turning into support here, double bottom also. Not to mention the time of the day. Um, this is not the right uh, the, the time I like to take trades. I like waiting for about another half hour, one hour from now until I see that the, the move of the day, as I call it, is underway. And I, um, I join that move. I, I don't like to try to anticipate what that move will be. Some attempts at the trend line. All right. Let's see what else we have. We consider this to be our um, retracement wave, and this would be our double top. We could have a scenario um, giving us a short at this level with a stop at 65.25 for a target of at least 164 and 163. 80, 163.90. That would be a 100 pips target with a 40 pips top. It's actually not bad. But this is aggressive as well. And again, we're going against the support at uh, 64.50. This uh, trade would have uh, as an argument the fact that we still have about 25 pips down to the support line. So if we have another attempt there, there's a good chance we can actually cover the risk by the time price uh, reverts back to long and hits our stop. And besides, the stop of 40 pips is not the same as the stop of 160. I would rather lean towards shorts here, but I don't want to point out this um, short setup. I don't have enough arguments on the bigger charts. To, um, to give me this, um, for me to be able to make this call. Very messy 15 minutes, really very choppy. See, this is the sort of retracement that uh, I would expect to continue uh, because it goes beyond the 78 and the same goes for this wave which breaks the previous low. So my preference definitely goes for shorts right now. All right, I'll just mark this too uh, on the daily chart. Where did I? Okay.
Okay. Uh, right here. Now, this would be a shorter term, short term uh, scenario. Short at basically around here, around uh, 80, I think. Just a second, guys. Let me check the exact level. I think we have 6490, actually. Yeah, 6490. The current level. 6490 with a stop loss at um, 65.25. The target in this case would be 63.90, something like uh, 100 pips. Okay, this would be the second um, trade. Slightly aggressive though, uh, given that the market is actually um, going up at the moment. I like trading it uh, short when I see at least one five minute candle that's actually going my way. So that would be the, the pretext to go in. I don't like uh, shorting when the market is actually going up right now. The last candle, five minute, 15 minute candles are actually bullish. But we have some support from the, uh, some resistance possibly at the pivot as well. So, uh, yeah, I, I actually, um, I'm going to, um, stand behind this, uh, setup. Short term, short at 6490, stop loss 6525. Um, I took it too with a half lot. 88 is my level actually. Um, stop at 6525. Take profit, I'm expecting it somewhere in the 16390 area. All right, this would be uh, the short-term um, scenario for today. I might think about adding to this position at 64.50, and I think that's the last um, trade I want to point out on pound dollar. Adding to the position while when price reaches here, if price of course reaches here, um, while uh, setting the stop at break even for this position. Now this would assume that price does not travel too far and just find some resistance here in the 164 90 165 area if it doesn't then i wouldn't add to the position i would not um, enter a short here if i'm getting stopped out getting stopped out the whole short setup uh, failed and i wouldn't uh, continue all right so either it drops from somewhere uh, around 165 before my stop at 65.25 is hit, then I might think about adding to this position and try to um, even um, increase furthermore the exposure once price um, reaches lower and confirms my setup. But if it goes against my initial um, judgment, then uh, there's no point in continuing now, simply exit. All right, so the possibility to add would be around 64.50 at the breach of the previous support. At the same time, the stop would go to break even for the first entry for the initial position. Quite messy though, this chart, this 30 minute chart is really showing a lot of choppiness. Um, by the way, guys, this is trying to pick tops and bottoms. It's not really a trend uh, following uh, position. Because right now, as I said, I shorted while price was going up. So it's actually trying to pick a top somewhere around 6495. And if it doesn't work out, that's why I want to be out at 25 pretty quick. There's no need to stretch this uh, position and uh, the risk uh, associated with it if things don't work out well. I only entered half lot, and another half lot is um, that I set an order to... Uh, sell pound dollar 6452 that it's only going to stay there if my stop doesn't get uh, hit first all right if i get stopped out i will cancel the short order here because that would invalidate the sequence of events that i'm expecting all right any questions so far
let's now have a look at the, at the different perspective in um, pound dollar. Uh, my my um, rainbow template. This is just a collection of moving averages telling me where the trend is for now. We have a bullish trend on the daily, quite clearly indicated by the rainbow. Let's see what else we have here. A four hour bullish as well. One hour seems to be caught in this um, the consolidation right now. It's just about the same thing as I noticed uh, on the other chart. Now I would like to see the 15 minutes uh, chart and below uh, pointing my way. You can see even the 30 minutes, in theory, it's still in a bullish rainbow. Just very strong corrections to the bottom of the rainbow and now the rainbow is uh, narrowed uh, here. So a very, very small corridor. What we want is to see continuation lower after this hesitation for the shorts to be um, fully activated. Yeah, the 15 minutes chart is the one indeed, um, as I expected, um, in my favor, but it's only working out for me. It's only uh, backing me up while price does not reach up 65.25. So actually the rainbow template is confirming my stop 65.25. Why is this? Because we see this was the first this was the first alignment, the first time that the moving averages um, went lower, broke the bottom of the rainbow, and created this bearish rainbow. And then price tried to get back to a bullish rainbow, but failed here, and again here, and again here on this spike. So there was attempts that there were some attempts to to get back to to a bullish rainbow, but they all failed, and it looks more probable right now for the shorts to be um, to have priority and to continue this move which by the way would be uh, our entry would be right at the retracement in this case so I would um, be able to uh, move my stop down to break even as early as 6460 I'm hoping that will happen in the next few hours I think uh, 6455 is a good enough level for adding to this trade 60 minutes rainbow would definitely confirm. The 30 minutes um, as well, I would be uh, trading below the bottom of the rainbow, so that's a good sign. And the one hour gives me clear road ahead down to 16390, so that's actually the target for short term. The one hour doesn't have to turn uh, bearish. While it's still in a bullish uh, rainbow, I can still short it down to the bottom of the rainbow that's 16399 well I think uh, down to 16390 I'm just using these uh, 15 20 pips uh, this distance uh, to uh, from around number 164 in our case all right so these are the scenarios for today for um, pound dollar let me just get back to the weekly chart. Uh, we have a swing uh, short at 64, 80, 64, uh, 65. That would um, actually um, assume that price will be retesting this uh, 165 area. Okay. But we did um, reach this point. Uh, so 64.90 was my entry. Um, 6488 was my entry into the short term uh, position. If you want to extend this uh, to, to just move your stop really high up, but then you have to make sure that your exposure is not too large because that would be quite a lot of uh, 200 and actually 250 pips. Uh, just a second, I was wrong here. Uh, this is 16660. One sixty-six sixty. That's uh, one hundred and sixty pips. And the target would be uh, lower in the one fifty-four area. You would really look for longer-term uh, position. The other alternative is to, to short uh, in short term with um, a stop right above the current uh, key level at sixty-five twenty. That's six four ninety. My entry six four eighty-eight. Stop loss. 
65.25. The target would be for me somewhere in the 163.90 area. But in any case, starting at 64.60, my stop would go to break even. So once price reaches about 30 pips of profit, I would move stop to break even to protect this position. Why? Because, well, at this point, this entry is aggressive. I know that well. Uh, I knew it uh, before entering. So what I want is to get the advantage of uh, of an initial position uh, taken really well. If this is not working out, then I'll be out with a minimal pain. Um, about um, 35 pips of, uh, of loss. Uh, that's where the stop loss is right now. Not a problem, especially if um, since I'm um, I'm into a position with half lot, but it has a very good perspective in case it's working out because I would be adding to this trade, trying to make some um, 50 full pips uh, at the break of uh, 64.50. So this would be with a full lot, half lot here, half lot here. So uh, it would give me something like I think 50 or 60. Uh, maybe even more if you average the first position. Um, with an initial risk, you can think about it in these terms, of 35 divided by 2, that's 17 pips. So that's what I'm risking right now uh, in terms of money. 17 pips. In case it's working out, the perspective for profit after adding the trade is somewhere around 60 or 70. So the risk to reward is definitely very, very good. By the way, these trades don't have to work all the time. Actually, if one out of three works for you, uh, you're out with um, nice profit, and um, actually, you're you're going to make about double of what you you lost in two trades. So it's really not a problem. But the key is to actually get out when the key level is uh, hit, when uh, the market is proving you wrong. Really do not delay even one minute. Just take the trade out immediately so that the loss would be minimal. And then if things work out, do the exact opposite. Just try to stay in and, and um, make the most of it. Add to the trade if possible. Because even if you lose, um, the loss would be still small. You, you have a good initial entry. That stop would be at break even. There's no loss on that position when you add to the trade. So it's just a question of losing the profit. But if things work out, then the profit is about four or five times the amount that you would lose. So uh, that makes for a very good risk to reward in the long run. All right, I think this is it for GU. Uh, let's have a look at GJ. All right, I'll just uh, start with a rainbow because as always, if we don't have uh, enough time apparently, Let me just quickly uh, go through the charts and try to make some time. Okay, we're looking at uh, daily and weekly. Remember, guys, I was talking about this um, weekly um, level, key level, for some time now. This 126 uh, area. Now, this 126 area should have held the first attempt here. Okay, it did for some time, then we had another attempt, uh, another good rejection. However, last week we had actually a break of this 125 uh, level. So this means uh, GJ might be uh, willing to go down to approximately 120. Because this closed on the weekly chart at 124.83, that's below 125 and clearly below any other close, it's just telling me that it might want to try down at 120 once again. There's really not much stopping it right now. So we're looking at a clear weekly bearish trend. There you go. Bearish trend on the weekly. I think it's um, more or less a channel here. Yep. There you go. 
out. DJ is moving into this um, bearish uh, channel. I'm trying to identify the waves here. Not really so easy actually because you can see one, two, three, four, five. The first attempt move up. One, two, three, four, five, move up. One, two, and wave three, four, and five should follow. Now let's see. Because the count seems to be uh, quite um, clear. Now this will be the first wave down. You can see, you can count the five waves inside. Then why am I considering this as a wave two? Because it's actually breaking the trend line of the first move. See this? This is the trend line. The trend line was broken. So that tells me we are looking at a new wave. Now let's see, wave three goes down all the way here. Why here? Well, again, because the trend line of this wave was broken with this spike. Not with the spike, but with the body of the candle, which closed here at um, 128.72. So that would be wave three. We assume that this is wave four. I'm quite sure that the top here represents something, either a previous high, low, that's the GJ's mark. I just see the horizontal level. Well, 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 look at this. Daily level, 130. Not to mention it's a psychological level. Previous support, 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 resistance, resistance, and again resistance on the spike. Now why are we interested in all this? I'm actually interested in what's happening next. One, two, three, four, and the wave five is what I'm interested in. This. We already saw that the target we can expect is somewhere in the 120 area. So that gives quite a lot of time and a lot of space to develop this uh, down move. Okay? And another very interesting uh, point in, in our case here the fact that we had a first move down, a retracement, okay, and it looks like this is the time to short for wave three. <coughs> Sorry. What if, what if this was wave five, just like that? Well, basically, wave five it would be just slightly bigger than wave four, which is a little bit strange. It's not impossible, but it's just a bit strange. It just seems very inconsistent. As you can see, if you just compare wave 5 to wave 3 to wave 1, it seems very small, quite inconsistent, very limited in time compared to the other two impulses of this formation. Now, if you compare that to what is, in my opinion, more probable, that the move will continue and even try to spike the word a big, big double bottom on the weekly and monthly charts, well, then you get, I think, something more, something that makes more sense in the logic of the waves. Let's just move to the four-hour chart. This is actually quite interesting, a quite interesting scenario. Uh, I'm going to follow it uh, through. There is not much chance that the current move on the GJ would be a retracement because there's nothing much that GJ can retrace at this point. As you can see, you, you look at this formation from the top to the current levels. What would it be retracing? It would actually retrace, let's try to assume that it's retracing this, but it already went down to almost 100%. Not to mention that overall on the weekly we are in a bearish trend, so it would be forcing it thinking that we are actually retracing now. This is an impulse, I think, with a probability of 90, 95%. So the 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 formation is quite justified. And our expectation to see um, the last remaining three waves of this formation uh, playing out. Now, this is what we're interested in, the projection for the next, I think, one, two weeks. We have one. Definitely, this is a retracement wave. 
but we seem to reach a point here, as you can see, the trend line is almost barely, it's barely holding at this time. Now this is what I am expecting for GJ next. I'll put it, uh, put these waves on the daily chart. I'm actually expecting the drop to be quite dramatic and then have a, just a, a quick uh, abrupt retracement but not going too far which will be the last uh, chance to put in some more shorts and then another attempt at about the same level. This is where I would expect GJ to double bottom, somewhere around 119. I'll even uh, lower this because since again we're dealing with a round number which is 120, I would expect a really very round number if I can say that. I would expect price to drop below that with about 150, maybe even 200 bits considering the volatility on GJ. So something like 119, 118, 50, 118. That would be the mid-term, longer term projection of what uh, we're looking at. So um, I don't want to point out anything uh, very specific right now because I think uh, this picture speaks for itself and if we are shorting from here, obviously the stops will have to be in the 129 area. Of course, you're thinking, okay, we can't just uh, short with 300 bits of um, a risk. Actually, you can. You can uh, take a trade with any stop loss, even if it's 500 bits. It's just a matter of how you manage your position and your exposure. And, of course, you're not going to take a... a a trade um, risking 300 bits to take uh, 30 bits on it, that wouldn't make any sense. But if you really want to take the whole uh, profit from, the, from this move, which uh, I think uh, is something around uh, 800 bits, then 300 bits of risk is not so much anymore. You can just simply treat it like a normal trade, reduce the exposure to maybe half of your position, maybe even quarter, who knows if... Um, if you're trading uh, more aggressively, that would give you a peace of mind that uh, you're not risking too much. And uh, at the same time, you will be going for a profit. Of course, you have to wait. Uh, a lot of patience is required in these uh, setups. So this can take um, one, two, maybe even three weeks. As you can see, the first uh, two um, legs of this um, pink wave took already about uh, 10 days, that's two trading weeks, might be another yeah, another month, maybe even more, but I'm expecting uh, GJ from now on to uh, hit the 120 level. If you re remember, I was actually uh, advocating for longs on GJ above the 130 as soon as this 125 becomes support. Well, it's not really happening. And the fact that the daily has clearly breached the 125, uh, that tells me that uh, maybe GJ is ready for another round of serious shorts. Let's see the four-hour chart. Um, the indicators are turning bearish now, guys. All my indicators are turning bearish. Another possibility would be to short GJ from around here, 126. Um, but then in this case, I have trouble um, with uh, GJ if I set the stop exactly at the previous high, so the stop will have to be 127. You would still risk about 90 pips, maybe 100. But remember that this is wave 3. Most likely we're looking at the wave 3, so this is the most uh, volatile, the best um, position to actually see accelerated price action. So. Uh, your 90 bits of risk could be worth it if uh, price accelerates to about four or 500 bits of profit in a matter of one or two days. You might like that. All right, let's see short term what we are dealing with here. No, it's not looking so good. <laughs> short term is not looking good. Uh, we have support at um, 125.90 and it looks like uh, it's holding. All right. Okay. So this is the setup that I want to point out. I simply wanted to make sure short term. Uh, I'm not going to point out uh, 
longer term uh, perspective you already uh, saw it on the daily chart simply just the short term scenario short at 125.65 with a stop loss at 126 let's say 126.60 the take profit I think for a trade like this it's worth trying to to go as much as possible to the downside with that wave because that would confirm the bearish wave so I would say 122 um, around 122, 121, uh, 90, 121, 80. This would be the setup that I want to point out today on GJ. Again, if I'm going on uh, the bigger charts, um, the first support is the previous level of support at 123.30. So if this one breaks, you can expect some accelerated price action, then a retest of this of this 123 in case you are missing the fun just look for an attempt at 12340 price will probably hurry right through this level but you might get another short at 12330 12350 so in case you're missing this trade okay you're missing the whole uh, drop at this time the setup will be very well confirmed really well confirmed and that will um, give you high probability for continuation uh, lower to um, directly to uh, 118. So watch for this level as well. It's a little bit far away from now. Price has not even started going down seriously, so I can't uh, make any such calls. But it's just, uh, I think, an important level to watch uh, over the next few days. All right. Any questions, guys? I think uh, this will be it for today. We have uh, one uh, scenario for GJ short term. We have uh, two trades to... Um, oh, I think I'm already out. No, not yet. But this uh, GU is not working too well. Oh, well. Um, I'm actually considering right now taking a long based on the um, rainbow. Second, I'm uh, getting out of this trade right now. I have my stop at 25, but this doesn't stop me from uh, exiting the position earlier if I see that things are not going the way I like them. Um, there's no point in insisting if you see that things are not working out. All right, I'm out. Uh, 65, 10. All right, that's 20 pips of, um, of loss uh, divided by 2, 10 pips, no problem. I'm actually thinking about an entry long in um, GU. Because right now, the 15 minute chart is starting to um, look, um, well, moderately bullish. But the 30 minutes, see, this is the rainbow setup that you like to, to catch. If in 10 minutes, GU is somewhere around here, 65, um, 05 and above, I will probably take a long for about 40, 50 pips. I would look for as always the 78 fib which corresponds to a previous high this would be the target 65 45 a few pips below where I'm expecting it to go things can change really quickly um, in the market so uh, especially these days we've had really strong volatility lately I don't know how it was for you guys for me it was quite a challenge to adapt um, uh, my assistance to this uh, high volatility period but it's been okay I just uh, had to take some measures to um, reduce uh, overall um, exposure because it's just uh, too uh, too volatile sometimes so another nine minutes to go on from this candle I will um, most likely enter along on the GU which stops right here right below stop at 6470 uh, I'll be risking uh, ideally not more than 35 pips and trying to take about 35 as well yeah Jeremy that that's actually um, a position to staying out of the market uh, conserving your your capital that's a decision to make too and uh, sometimes can be uh, 
a really good one, especially if you're not ending the month of August um, at a loss. Uh, I've had a really good month um, in terms of results, but I can't say that um, I'm really uh, spot on on everything uh, this month. It's the second holiday is breaking some of the usual patterns, what I uh, usually look for. Um, so I think, well, my results have been actually better than uh, my analysis this month, uh, luckily. Well, Prince, above 166. Yeah, I, 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 we could see it at 166, but uh, I think the question is if it's going to reach 167. Because if, it re if it's reaching 167, uh, there's not, I don't have any more arguments in, in favor of shorts, and uh, what looks now like a retracement would actually become um, an impulsive wave with target minimum 171. So the answer is yes, I see it. That uh, I, I think 166 is quite possible, but it won't prove too much. What I'm really interested in is if it's going to, to break the 16650, 16660 area, which would show me that it's strong enough to break uh, 167 and reach towards 171. As I said before, if you look at this, um, I, I just pointed out this setup here. Um, my stop loss is 16660. That's where I think GU should not go. Uh, if it touches 166, um, from this swing, uh, longer term perspective, if you are short, I think you should still stay in. And just play your chance all the way. If it's touching 660, then uh, really I, I would have to um, readjust to the positioning and uh, probably um, look for the, the first uh, opportunity to go long. It's just how the way uh, things are. All right. Thank you very much for today's session, guys. Thanks for participating. Uh, it will be available um, as a recording uh, soon. Um, I think uh, Maud will uh, let everyone know. Thanks for um, participating today, and I'll see you all next um, next Thursday. The webinar will be moved to um, Thursday at 9 a.m. GMT. So that's uh, going to be our um, regular hour from now on. Uh, Tuesdays are currently always with problems, so um, we decided to uh, switch this session uh, to uh, Thursday. All right, thanks again, guys, for today. I'll see you all next Tuesday. Have a great uh, weekend.